So appropriately, it's a dark and stormy night here in Southern California. Seems like the perfect time to tell a scary story. Guys, I know I said I was going to get a short film out this week, but uh, I ran out of time. Halloween is basically here. I've got work. I've got stuff I'm helping out with uh, at Velocity. I wanted to get two videos out, and so I decided, let's go with the one that's a little more fun, a little more out there. Something that I won't be able to do any other time of the year. We're going to look at a short story that I wrote in fourth grade. Quick disclaimer, um, I was a sheltered white kid <laughs> in fourth grade. I'm part Spanish, part Mexican. That's I'm mostly German, but like there's a little bit of that in there. And so for some reason during that time, I had this weird fascination with like writing Mexicans into my stories. It's very weird. Also, if you grew up in the 90s, you probably will recognize the story that I'm borrowing heavily influence from. If you don't get it initially, I'll let you know at the end of the video, but I'm very clearly ripping off something here. <laughs> so without further ado, let's turn out the lights, turn on some candles, get some candy, some popcorn, whatever we get to in the spooky mood. Now let's dive into Creepy Halloween Tales, The Paper Cut. On a dark and stormy Halloween night, two years after the opening of Laguna Blanca School, a Mexican student stayed behind at school because he hadn't finished his homework for an entire year! Right when the clock was about to strike midnight, his pencil lead broke in two. As he crossed the room to the pencil sharpener, he forgot that he had the world's pointiest piece of paper right next to the sharpener. I mean, there's a, there's a plaque and everything. It was it was official, guys. As he passed by it, he got the world's biggest paper cut across his arm. Again, like the world, the Guinness Book of World Records people were right there. It was uh, it's official. Everything's legit, guys. Don't you worry. At the same moment, coincidentally, <laughs> lightning struck right through the roof and on him. He was never seen again. Many years passed, and once again. A student had to stay behind on Halloween night. His name was Bobby McSteve. However, the same thing did not happen to him. First, he heard a toilet flush in the bathroom, but there was no one in the bathroom. Next, he heard a faint sound of a mariachi band. <laughs> But Fiesta wasn't until next year. Then it started to rain outside, but rain wasn't in the weather forecast. Dang you, Dave Hove Day, Ho, Ho, how are your names pronounced? Then the door creaked open, and in stepped a dark shadowed figure of a guy wearing a sombrero. He came closer, and closer, and closer still, until finally, he was so close, the student could feel the dark figures. Finally, he saw the dark figure take out an over-sharpened pencil from his shirt pocket. Then the figure spoke in Spanish. Unfortunately, Bobby hadn't started his Spanish homework, so he did not know what the figure was saying. The janitor came the next morning. Bobby but was nowhere to be found. And all the janitor had found of the scene was a note that had the same Spanish sentence that was said to Bobby. The janitor went to have the letter translated because he, he doesn't speak Spanish either, apparently. When it was translated, it said, This shall happen every year unless you bring me ellipses. Ellipses. The rest of the letter had been smeared off the page. Nobody really knew what happened to Bobby that night. That night, a local resident, Mrs. Jones, or as the children called her, Old Lady Crazy, uh, claimed to have seen an awful sight through her window across the street from the school. She claimed that at midnight, she saw the shadows of a kid being stabbed by an over-sharpened pencil. I'd I'd recognize the shadow of an over-sharpened pencil anywhere. 
I mean, clear, like, you, you can tell, like, when a pencil is dull just from a shadow. It's, uh, it's something. She went back to sleep thinking it was a dream and not knowing the horror that had occurred. To this day, some people think that her prediction was right and she really had seen the horrible unfolding tale that continues to haunt people to this day. Others say there was no Bobby McSteve, there was no Mexican kid, and that she was insane. No one is quite sure yet what really happened. But one thing is for sure, if you don't do your homework at the right time, I'm SORRY TO RAIN HOME! Wow, okay, jeez, Troy, you don't have to, what, what is that, like, there's like nine excla exclamation points? That's, that's, that's a little overkill, buddy. Alright, cool. So that was the paper cut. Surprisingly, not my most embarrassing creative project. Ugh. Were you spooked? Was it as scary for you as it was for me? Nothing quite as scary as seeing how subtly racist you were <laughs> just a couple of years ago. In all seriousness, it's super fun to go back and just kind of see where my mind was all those years ago. And if you didn't pick up, it was very heavily inspired by uh, the Hash Sling Slasher from that one Spongebob episode. <laughs> you gotta start somewhere. We don't all start off writing Shakespeare. Not that I'm writing Shakespeare right now. But anyway, what'd you guys think of this thing? <laughs> go ahead, comment below. Let me know. Do you guys still have any of your funny projects laying around if you are into writing or those sorts of things? Again, comment that below, too. Sorry that I couldn't fit a short film review in before the end of Halloween, but hey, this is pretty fun, too. I'll see you guys next week with a review of the short film A Boy Named Bellamy. It's another spooky movie with creepy kids. I'm gonna go to bed right now because it is super late and I got a lot going on right now, but I just want to say thanks for stopping by and watching this video. Hope you guys have a great Halloween, and as always, God bless, and stay saucy.